Hello and welcome to STEM Class, a two-part video series from UC Berkeley's Marvell Nanofabrication Laboratory. I'm Allison Dove, and I'll be walking you through some basic theory and mechanics of scanning electron microscopy. Why do we use electrons to form images instead of photons, like in an optical microscope? The answer is resolution. Resolution in an optical microscope is a function of the wavelength of the light and the numeric aperture of the optics. Numeric aperture is a dimensionless number that indicates the quality of the lens, so if you have a higher quality lens, you can resolve more features. The wavelength of light in the visible spectrum is between 400 nanometers and 700 nanometers. Practically speaking, this means that the resolution of an optical microscope is about 500 nanometers. In contrast, the wavelength of an electron is a function of its energy. In an SEM, that means the wavelength depends on the accelerating voltage. In the nanolab, we can accelerate electrons between half a kilovolt and 130 kilovolts. That means that the electron wavelengths range from 3 picometers to 55 picometers. In theory, that means we could image individual atoms. Sadly, that's not the limiting factor for SEM resolution. The limiting factor for resolution is the spot size of the electrons when they hit the sample. We'll discuss how to manipulate the spot size in the next part of this video. All of the SEMs that we have in Nanolab are field emission emitters. That means they have a thin tip attached to a filament. When we apply a potential voltage to that tip, we're able to extract electrons. Those electrons are emitted in a cone. We will be using the subsequent components to focus that cone down to get the resolution that we want. To change the size of that cone of electrons, we need to control the electron voltage, the number of electrons in the cone, the convergence angle alpha, and the diameter of the cone when it interacts with our sample. We make various choices with the SEM mechanics to control these parameters. Understanding why we make certain choices will help you get the images you want for your research. There are four SEM components that let you control the beam characteristics. The source, the condenser, the aperture, and the stage. Let's see how each one of these interacts with the beam. The source is possibly the most important, as it is the source of the electrons themselves. The main parameter that you as a user can control is the accelerating voltage of the electrons. Higher voltages will result in a higher number of electrons, a higher current, because you are extracting more electrons at a higher rate from the filament. You will also have a smaller convergence angle, since the electrons will be more directed towards that potential. Similarly, you will have a smaller beam diameter because of the directedness of the beam. We'll also return to electron voltage in video 2 when we see how it interacts with the sample. The next component we will discuss is the condenser lens. This isn't a piece of glass, like a lens in an optical microscope, but a magnetic lens, a coil, that has current running through it to deflect the electron beam. But otherwise, the behavior of the lens is quite similar to that of optical lenses. A strong lens, like a strong glasses prescription for your eyes, will cause large deflections to the electrons, and a weak lens will cause a small deflection. In a strong lens, the electrons are focused to a point close to the lens, and they can then deflect further as they leave the lens. And in a weak lens, the focal point is further away from the lens, resulting in a less divergent beam. By itself, this doesn't mean that you have a smaller beam current, since you have the same number of electrons coming in as you have going out. When you pair the condenser with the aperture plate, you get a smaller beam current. The density of electrons is lower in the strong lens case, so the number of electrons that make it through the aperture will be smaller with the strong lens. At the same time, the condenser lens will also control the beam diameter. The beam diameter at the source is the line at the top of the screen. It is the same for both the strong and weak lenses. Once the beam is focused by the condenser lens, the beam has a new effective size. A stronger deflection will result in a smaller beam diameter. This also means that beam current correlates with the beam diameter. If you want a smaller beam spot on your sample, you will need to use a smaller beam current. The next element in the SEM is the aperture plate. 
This behaves as you would expect. A smaller aperture will result in a smaller beam current, a smaller convergence angle, and a smaller beam diameter. The final component that we use to control the beam characteristics is the sample stage. The stage will set the distance between the objective lens and our sample. There are some trade-offs here that depend on the imaging that you want to do. The objective lens is the final focusing lens to get the beam in focus on our sample. The working distance is the distance between the objective lens and the sample. If you choose to have a small working distance, you will have a small depth of focus, and features at different heights won't be in focus in your image. However, a smaller working distance will produce a smaller beam diameter, so your resolution will be higher with a smaller working distance. Choose a working distance appropriate for the work you need to do, depending on how you need to balance resolution and depth of focus. In addition to controlling the SCM components, we also need to understand how magnification and stigmation play a role in the resolution of our images. Up to now, the beam hasn't been moving. It's been stationary through the center of the beam column. In order to make an image, it has to be deflected. In an optical microscope, you change the magnification by using a different physical lens. In an electron microscope, you zoom in simply by reducing the area over which you are deflecting the beam. This increases the magnification. If you have a very large magnification, but also a very large beam, you can oversample your image where the spot size of the beam is larger than your pixel size. On the other hand, you don't want to have a very small spot size and a very large pixel. This isn't necessarily a problem for imaging, but this can significantly add to your writing time if you are doing e-beam lithography. The last factor impacting resolution is astigmatism, or the roundness of the beam, since an oddly shaped beam will produce oddly shaped images. The components of an SEM can't be manufactured without defects, and these defects will result in an elliptical spot instead of a circular one. This elliptical shape changes depending on the beam characteristics, so each user needs to be able to correct for this during their session. This is done using another set of coils, called the stigmeter coil, to correct the beam shape. When you sit down to operate a SEM, you will likely spend a good bit of time adjusting both the stigmation and focus knobs, two components that we've spent the least amount of time discussing in this video. But those adjustments are just trying to find the correct machine settings because you've already made a choice for the voltage, current, and working distance before adjusting for focus and stigmation. It is possible that you won't be able to tune up the beam because someone has damaged one of the components. This happened to Zeiss SEM in June of 2018 when someone ran the stage into the pole piece, which is a protective piece below the final objective lens. While it was possible to use the tool in this state, it was very difficult to correct the beam conditions. It is very important to be aware of your sample with respect to the delicate components of the beam to protect them from damage. At this point, you should be familiar with the role of the source, condenser, aperture, and stage in determining the beam characteristics. You should know what working distance is and what astigmatism is. And of course, you will always remember to never hit the pole piece. This is the end of video one. Please continue to video two to complete the requirements for some class.